Hello my friends. Did you know Australia is the country with the highest mammal extinction rate in the world? More than 70% of Australia's native animals are found nowhere else on Earth, so a loss for Australia is also a loss for the world. One of the biggest threats to native species is feral cats. In today's video, we look at how Australian farmers deal with 6.3 million feral cats. Feral cats first appeared in the wild in the 1850s. To date, the number of feral cats in Australia is estimated at 1.4 to 6.3 million. Wild cats have become a haunting name for Australians, especially farmers. Feral cats are dangerous invasive species. They eat millions of other animals, causing ecological imbalance. They are considered perfect hunters, patient, silent and adaptable. Many native animals are the perfect size prey for feral cats. Currently, many native species such as rats only exist in areas free of feral cats, such as some islands and fenced areas. Although they are in the same cat family, these stray cats are not cute at all. They are aggressive and cause a lot of damage. Specifically, feral cats are linked to the extinction of 25 species of native small and medium-sized mammals and further threaten the existence of more than 100 other native species in Australia. Among them, estimates of the annual predation impact of feral cats on native wildlife in Australia show that 272 million birds 470 million reptiles, 815 million mammals were killed, along with the undetermined losses were invertebrates and amphibians. These massacres are often committed by feral cats living in the bush, but cats in town areas also kill large numbers of animals. Besides, they can also injure people. On the outside, feral cats can be difficult to distinguish from domestic cats. They have agile bodies, sharp senses, and good coordination that are very suitable for hunting. Wild cats live alone and are active at dawn and dusk. During the day, they tend to lie in sheltered areas, including rabbit holes, logs, or dense bushes. Feral cat populations are self-sustaining and able to reproduce successfully thanks to abundant food sources. On average, females give birth to two litters per year, the first in spring, the second in late summer and early fall. Under favorable conditions, baby wildcats remain with their mother until about seven months of age. They then disperse and live alone. These individuals give birth to dozens of other litters of feral cats. Just like that, wildcats expanded their territory and invaded all of Australia. The number of feral cats suddenly increased, leading to a lack of food. Therefore, they tend to increase their hunting and attacking behavior to ensure survival. Like a leopard in the desert, the feral cat's gentle steps and sharp eyes are directed towards its prey. These unfortunate ducks will become today's meal. Usually, these birds will be the favorite prey of feral cats when they are hungry. Although the birds protested, it was ineffective. They struggled desperately until feral cats tore them apart. In fact, attacking these small animals is quite easy for feral cats. This is a picture of a tiny wild cat attacking a deer. You're right, this absurd thing really happened. In a fight in the wild, victory always belongs to the fierce predators. Strength does not lie in greatness. The truly strong person is the one who survives to the end. The wild cat is such a strong person. They are small, but their attack power and brutality are enough to terrify their opponents. Not only do they attack wild animals, feral cats also attack pets 
when given the opportunity. Of course, your pet is no match for a wild predator. If not stopped in time, everything will get worse. Its outcome will probably be the same as the deer or deer just now. Feral cats also pose a threat to human health because they can carry infectious diseases such as rabies and respiratory infections. The Australian Feral Cat Reduction Action Plan begins, including direct measures to reduce feral cat numbers such as trapping and baiting. Cameras help plans execute better. Farmers will know how many stray cats are lurking around their area. In addition, the most effective form of controlling feral cats on a large scale is using poisonous bait. However, feral cat bait is only used in Western Australia. Many native animals in the area have developed resistance to this poison. In some parts of Australia, poisonous bait can pose a significant danger to wildlife. What was your first reaction when you saw this image? Don't let its appearance fool you. In fact, each of these cute wild cats can kill up to 1,000 native animals each year. This problem is getting worse, meaning that in some cases, the added pressure of feral cats could quickly push other animals out of the world. Australia's national scientific agency, CSIRO, has reported feral cats kill an average of 1.8 billion Australian animals each year, equivalent to 2,000 native animals every minute. A terrible number, realising that this situation cannot last. The Australian government allows citizens to participate in wild cat hunting activities. However, this can only be done with a hunting licence and in strict compliance with government regulations. The goal is to reduce the number of feral cats in the area, maintain the ecosystem and ensure safety and efficiency in hunting. About 211,000 feral cats were culled in 2023. Dozens of them were hunting possums in the mountains and others were hunting at night in remote and arid regions of Australia. Night comes when feral cats are active in searching for food. The instinct of a predator allows them to operate effectively at night. However, they did not know that in the distance, there were eyes watching and gun muzzles aiming at them. In order to optimize the effectiveness of hunting wild cats, many people also choose to participate in night hunting activities. This is a natural rule if you want to catch a predator, you must come when they are hunting. During hunts, farmers can end the lives of feral cats with a shot, but the encroachment of entire feral cat populations cannot. The claws of feral cats have deeply invaded Australia's ecosystem. In the fall before food is scarce, feral cats will hunt small animals for meals. They move to areas near residential areas to find food. Farmers can always easily see stray cats in their gardens at night through cameras. You see, controlling feral cats is a challenge. Locating feral cat hunting takes a lot of effort. Hunters often use specialized lighting systems combined with infrared hunting lights. This is extremely useful for night hunts helping hunters clearly identify the target and location of feral cats. But things are not that simple. These stray cats are much more difficult to deal with than we think. They are extremely sensitive and have the ability to sense their surroundings very quickly. Besides, cats' eyesight at night is very good, so once they have identified the target, they quickly rush in and catch their prey. Therefore, hunters need to be extremely cautious. If detected, feral cats will run away or return to attack. A night hunting group needs at least two people to support each other. All they need to do is hide, quietly observe and wait. 
When they detect a target, they will move their hunting equipment towards the target, aim and bring back their bodies. In fact, besides the hardship, hunting also brings many interesting things. You won't know when the wild cats will appear, but the feeling of discovering and defeating them will certainly make you excited. This joy does not come from killing, but farmers know that every shot they fire will help prevent the encroachment of feral cat populations, or at least discourage feral cats in the development area. In addition to hunting, feral cat trapping is also allowed in all parts of Australia. All measures are the same. The goal is to limit the number of aggressive predators. Although feral cats have only existed in Australia for the last 200 years or so, they have left a destructive mark on the Australian landscape. In recent years, Australian farmers have also made strong plans to limit the invasion of feral cats. You see, they are very determined to fight these cute-looking assassins. Hello my friends. Originally, only 13 wild rabbits were brought to Australia from England in 1859 by a wealthy man named Thomas Austin. Since then, to this day, the overpopulation of wild rabbits and their negative impact on nature and agriculture has always left the government and many farmers in Australia with a headache to find solutions and appropriate countermeasures. Over the past 100 years, governments and farmers in Australia have adopted a variety of measures to control wild rabbit populations, such as building fences and destroying rabbit burrows. Even biological control measures such as infecting rabbits with viruses and releasing them into the wild have been applied. However, due to favourable living conditions and extremely fast reproduction, the number of wild rabbits in Australia has always increased rapidly, even though at one point 98% of the wild rabbits on this continent were exterminated. Female wild rabbits usually start breeding as soon as they reach five to six months of age. Currently, female feral rabbits in Australia usually give birth to four litters a year, and each litter usually has around seven to 10 kits born. Yes, that's right, kits is the name for baby rabbits. Baby wild rabbits spend most of their time living in burrows and they are only allowed out when the mother wild rabbit feels it's safe. These baby rabbits will feed on their mother's milk for about four weeks before starting to nibble on food. According to research by the Centre for Invasive Species Solutions in Australia, most wild rabbits will separate from their mothers and begin an independent life as soon as they are weaned. It is estimated that there are currently about 287 million wild rabbits living in Australia, of which about 177 million rabbits are born each year. Hundreds of millions of rabbits are distributed over 71% of Australia's land area, and they are found anywhere there is grass and that they can burrow. In the wild, young wild rabbits are often favourite prey of carnivores such as dingoes, feral cats or crows. However, the number of wild rabbits killed each year by predators is a tiny fraction of the total number of wild rabbits living in Australia. A 
after about four to five weeks, these wild rabbits have been weaned and start a new independent life. They will burrow and live wherever there is a food source and less disturbances like in a backyard, in a garden or on a hillside. Basically anywhere in Australia could be an ideal habitat for this highly adaptable animal. Except in areas with a lot of clay and sand, like in the northeast of South Australia. Currently, New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria are the states with the largest wild rabbit populations in Australia of which New South Wales is home to around 65 million wild rabbits. The negative impact that hundreds of millions of feral rabbits have on Australia's ecosystems include the depletion of vegetation and natural grasslands associated with overgrazing by wild rabbits. It is said that just one wild rabbit could make an entire lawn at an international standard football field impossible to grow grass. An adult wild rabbit usually weighs about 3.3 pounds and needs to consume 7% of their body weight each day. The burrowing habits of hundreds of millions of wild rabbits in Australia also causes severe erosion and destruction of the landscape in which they live. In addition, another negative effect of wild rabbits on Australia can be thought of as the habit competition with native animals. Hundreds of millions of wild rabbits also threaten some 322 species of flora and fauna, and this cost the Australian government more than $215 million a year. To this day, Australia's wild rabbit population is 11 times larger than the country's population, and they always have been a major problem for the ecosystem and agriculture. In response to the rampant wild rabbits, the Australian government allows anyone to hunt them in unlimited numbers. In addition, the government also encourages people to organise wild rabbit hunts to reduce the number of this invasive species. Along with that, biological control measures are always being studied to find viruses that can kill wild rabbits in large numbers. In short, just like the wild boar problem in the United States, the wild rabbit problem in Australia will still cause headaches for the government and farmers for many years to come to find effective control measures for this invasive species.